Everybody, we're Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victor Broadcast. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll get thank right into Lord. today's Bible lesson. Father, we just thank you and praise you for your word. We lift our faith. Yes. We speak words of faith. We believe that we receive revelation from heaven. Revelation of yourself, sir how to live by faith, how to walk and live in the kingdom of God. Yes, Lord. According to the words of Jesus, according to the, the written word of the living God. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go. Hey, Glory. Hi, Ken. Hey. <laughs> Amen. Let's go back over here to the 103rd Psalm. I got caught up in that prayer and I want to just keep on praying. Well, that would have been all Amen. right. Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. The 103rd Psalm, if you would please. Bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He's talking to his memory. He's talking to his soul. He's blessing his soul by blessing the Lord. See, by faith, he is stirring up the blessing of the Lord that's on him and in him. We need to learn, right. we, need, we need to learn how to do what this. What we need to do a lot more of. And forget not all his benefits. These are our benefits. Now we read the scripture where Jesus was made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Well, back up, he redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus. Well, that's us. That's us. Amen. Hallelujah. Now then, the blessing then of Abraham, we have been redeemed from the curse and blessed with the blessing of Abraham. Hallelujah. So now notice this. He forgives all our iniquities who healeth all mm, your diseases. Thank you, Jesus. All now remember, under the curse of the law from which we've been redeemed, the 61st verse, it says, 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, verse 61. All sickness and all disease not even written in that book of the law are under the curse. So we've been redeemed from all sickness and all disease. And here it is, uh, our, it, this is our, one of our benefits that, we, that healing belongs to us. Thank you. But now you can't, you can't receive the blessing of the Lord, the blessing of Abraham, and continue to talk on the curse side. We talked about that yesterday in some depth. We'll see it more uh, in today's lesson. Who redeems your life from destruction. Now you could, if, if we had time, we could go over there and look at all of those things uh, that are destructive to your life and we're redeemed from them. And you can follow it throughout the scripture. We're redeemed from it. Um, and then the land of Goshen was redeemed from the curses that came on Egypt. And you come over to the eighth chapter of Romans, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus Amen. has made us free from the, the laws law of, of sin, sin and death. death. Yes. Well, then how come that bad stuff happened? I've had people ask me this, say, Brother Copeland, why do bad things happen to good people? Because good people make bad choices. That's right. Now you either make a bad and choice say bad words. and and they they speak sick words they they Poverty. speak words that release and authorize bad things right. in their lives. Well, how come God didn't stop it? He did. But if you don't appropriate your mm -hmm. redemption from that destruction, then Jesus as Lord and high priest over your life does not have the authority 
to interrupt and break into your life. Now, he, he will continually talk to you and tell you things, but people don't listen to him. Well, something just told me not, not to do that. Well, then why'd you go do it? So, listen now carefully. If you don't activate by faith, those things that belong to you in Christ Jesus, then they are not active or activated in your life. We know from the third chapter of book of Galatians again that Abraham's faith activated Abraham's blessing. That's right. It still does. Let's turn over there and look at that. Hold, hold your place there in Psalm 103. And let's go back to Galatians chapter 3. And let's look at the fifth verse. He therefore that ministers to you the Spirit and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, now how did he believe God? He believed what he said. That's right. And then he said. The hearing of faith. He, he said, remember, Gloria, you remember, in fact, um, let, let's hold our, our place there and let's go to the fourth chapter of Romans. And let's take a look at that, that scripture right there. And remember what that said there? Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Let's, let's find out how he did that. In uh, Romans 4, in verse 16, therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. That, well, that would be us because uh, if, you're, if you be in Christ, then right. are you Abraham's right. seed and yeah. heirs according to the promise. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So the, the way he believed God is what we're talking about right now. He fathered this thing in the earth in his covenant with God. That's right. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed. Now, in my Bible, I notice I have a, a, a little mark there on the word before. I come over to the, to the center reference and it says, or like unto him. Hmm. Now what, remember what we talked about yesterday about saying the same thing? Mm -hmm. That's what he did there. Now, here's what this is hmm. saying. And if you read it out of the literal text, you go, go back to the Greek text and look at this. Here's what it says. Abraham acted and did what God did in God's presence before him. He did it in front of him. He, he did his best act just like him, right in front of him. There are people that will get so upset. Gloria and I have had religious people get so bent out of shape with us. One fellow said, I want to tell you brother so-and-so's ruined. He said, the, the, this fellow that told me about this, so he said, why? Well, he's got to running around the, with, with Copeland and the both of them are just chasing around everywhere trying to just act like little Jesuses. I thought that was the point. Me too. <laughs> the idea that he could act like God or be like God. Well, that was the same thing the Pharisees said about Jesus yes, when was. he came in here. Mm -hmm. But here Abraham did this in God's presence. Now, what did he do? Before him whom he believed, even God, even 
God who makes alive the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. Verse 19, being not weak in faith, he gave glory to God. How? He considered not his own body now dead. Verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Now that, that's the way he conducted himself. All right. And fully persuaded. He, he, was, he was fully, fully persuaded. persuaded. Now, how did he get that way? If you go over there and read his life, there was a time he wasn't hardly persuaded at all. He thought, he thought he just missed the whole thing. God entered a blood covenant with him and settled it forever. That's right. We have a blood covenant in the blood of Jesus yes. and it has been settled yes, forever, sir. praise God. Amen. He's Amen. our high priest. And in his very presence, we speak his very words and we speak them expecting them to come to pass because we expect him to support his words in our mouth. He's the high priest of our profession. Yes, he is. Well, doesn't the scripture our say confession. that we have been made priests unto our God, under our, pre, our high priest Jesus? Yes. We are kings and priests. He's the king of kings. He's high priests over priests. Well, we're the kings that he's king of. Amen. Amen. Now, let's go back to You know, then. he was that to us a good while before many good things started happening in our lives. He was over our profession and he was our Lord. But we were professing the wrong things constantly, well, so we weren't giving him anything to work with. Well, take, go back to what we talked about there. That's, that's such a good point because it, that's what Christian people don't understand. You know. Uh, you, I have set before you life and death, blessing, blessing and, and cursing. cursing you choose. That's it right there. Now, you cannot trust any other source of words to be right but these. These are God's words. Now they've had a religion made out of them. And Jesus said, your religious traditions yeah. have made the word of God of no effect. So if you're just confessing religious words, they have no effect. They won't change anything. Here we are. You know the scripture says out of the mouth of two witnesses let every word be established. Here we are in the earth. The human being is the establishing witness for what he or she has or does or has happened to them in the earth. On one side is God, the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, open your eyes to the words of the kingdom. Open right. your ears to the ears of the kingdom. Your eyes are blessed. Your ears are blessed. And anyone, whosoever, will see the word of the kingdom and hear the word of the kingdom and understand the word of the kingdom in his heart and allow them to convert yeah. him. What does that mean? Change, change the way you say, change what you see, change what you hear, change the way you, th way you think, mm -hmm. and that's what changes the way you believe. And what changes the way you receive as well. Yeah, because he said when now you do that, with him he of said any time, any time, Anybody, this is a whosoever scripture. That's right. Anytime anybody does that, Jesus said this, 13th chapter of Matthew, I should or will heal them. Praise God. Amen. Anytime. Well, then why, why are Christian people staying sick? Because they're not doing that. What are they doing? They're saying, I'm sick. I'm sick. I hurt, but they don't just say I'm sick when there's something wrong in their body. 
They say it all the time. He just makes me sick when he says that. Well, I'm I, sick and tired. I tell you, I am sick and tired of his well, the way he's been carrying on. You know, oh, mercy. Doesn't that just make you sick? And then I just can't believe that they did what. I can't believe what. Can you believe they and said and that? Then, and then, then they say the word doesn't work for me. Well, when he says, I can't working. believe, I can't believe, I can't believe, I can't believe, when it comes time to believe something on purpose, they can't believe. Because the words you've been saying have set up certain spiritual laws and they're functioning. Because God said these things in the very beginning, they can't be changed. This is a word governed, word created system yeah. of planets. God set this thing in motion with his word. Now we understand it more using our current uh, technology terms. We could say it like this. This is at all times a word activated system. Mm -hmm, it is. It's programmed to respond to words of faith. Consequently, it has to respond to words of fear because fear was twisted faith. Job, you know, all that trouble came on Job and people that don't understand what happened to Job and, and read it wrongly, God didn't do anything to Job. Satan did it all and Job opened the door to it and at first he didn't know how he did it, but he said, all those things I have so greatly feared has come upon me. When you go back and read what yeah. Job said, what Job said, what Job said, and his fears, he said them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it happened. But the first time he got back on faith and said what God said to say, the power of God ripped that whole thing off of him and doubled everything he had had in his life right. with the blessing of Abraham. Praise God. That is a good, most people don't pick, think about that side of Job, but the New Testament says to consider that. that that's actually what the story yeah. is about. Now. The words that you choose and speak, you become the establishing witness. Well, sure looks like I'm gonna get laid off. I just know that's, that's why, yeah, I know that's, that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna be next. Yeah, yeah, sure as a world. I probably better get out and get started looking at me another job. No, you need to be seeking first the kingdom of God because God has your job for you someplace. Now you, might, you probably got that one out searching and banging around, beating the bushes. But when you seek first the kingdom of God and you find out where your place is, God has a plan, a purpose, and a yes, place. Glory to God. And it is a wealthy place for every human being ever born on the face of this earth. I mean, Poverty never was God's idea, and it is not God's idea now. It's a curse. It is a curse. Now. I've been redeemed from the curse. You seek the Lord. I'm yours to command, sir, according to your word. Scripture says, Every member of the body of Christ has a chosen place where God has his pleasure in their life. His pleasure, the scripture says, is the prosperity of his servant. That's right. Amen. Amen. So. You know, we were born again a while before we began to prosper because we kept acting like we did in the world, saying uh, bad things. Uh, you know, how are we ever going to do this? We'll never get out of debt. Well, and we were in the wrong place. We were. And uh, you remember the first thing that happened to Abraham when God got his attention? He said, leave your kinfolks and go to a That's place right. that I will show you. That's He'll exactly show you right. where your place is. Now there's been great theological debates over 
uh, why he moved him to that land and why da 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 da. He was in the wrong place as a reason That's he moved. That's exactly right. So when, it, when he put him over there where God had planned for him to be, that's where the power was. That's where the protection was. Where the blessing That's for him was. That's where the blessing was. That's right. That's where his wealth was. Now, as long as I was trying out there beating around, even after I got saved, uh, trying to, quote, make a living flying airplanes, I, wa I, I never was called to fly airplanes uh, commercially. I was called to fly. I was born to fly. God put that in me. I was born to fly, I knew it, but the time was five years old. That's the grace of God. There are things God puts in you that are that's His right. grace, and they develop over years because that's part of your equipment. And most Christian people have the idea that if I like it, it's probably wrong. No, 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 no. I imagine Elvis, his mama told him, boy, you better get a job. Ain't nobody can make a living picking a guitar. <laughs> well, that's Elvis right. was called to preach, he knew it, but he never did get in that place and it cost him his life young. God didn't kill him, no. but he didn't know how to keep that from happening. But when you get in your place and that's where your church is, get over in the church because that's where your job is. Don't go hunting the job. Find out where your place is and go get in it. Oh, Brother Copeland, I, uh, you know, if I was to do that, God liable to send me to Ten Buck Two. Have you ever been to Ten Buck Two? No, I haven't. It might be a pretty nice place. Let me tell you this. If God calls you to Ten Buck That's Two, right. woo, Ten Buck Two is the place for you. It's Ten Buck Three you don't want to have no part of. <laughs> you want to you be where you're supposed to be because that's where your protection is and that's where the glory yes, is. That's, that's where right. your happiness is. That's where all of the good the stuff is. is. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, and I'll be back in just a minute.